behalf of Badan Warisan Malaysia, I would like to wish you all a very warm welcome and thank you for joining us. We'd love to know a little bit more about you all, so please feel free to type a little hello in the chat box and let us know where you're joining us from. Um, today, we'll be hearing a talk on the vital importance of community engagement to the success of conservation projects. Um, in, in this case, it's projects in which our speaker was involved in Sarawak. Community engagement is clearly something very important to what we do here at Badan Warisan Malaysia. So we're extremely keen to uh, learn from Professor Gaffar um, and his insights today. Um, I'm pleased to introduce you to our very special guest speaker, Professor Gaffar. Um, he's a professor in the School of Housing, Building and Planning at the University of Science in Malaysia in Penang. Having gained his bachelor's and master's degrees in architecture in the United States, Professor Gaffar took his PhD in conservation at the University of Sheffield in the UK. Since then, he has been incredibly influential in the field of heritage conservation in Malaysia. He's a registered conservator under the Department of National Heritage and an honorary curator for the Sarawak Museum Department, as well as being a member of a number of prestigious heritage organizations, uh, including the National Heritage Council and ICOMOS Malaysia. Uh, he is uh, chairman of the Architectural Heritage and Landscape Committee under Jabatan Warisan Negara and was the international correspondent from Malaysia for the Asia Pacific Cultural Center for UNESCO in Nara, Japan from 2008 to 2022. Uh, he was also on the Penang Technical Review Panel from 2010 to 2022. Um, sorry an extremely uh, well-educated <laughs> speaker we have today, very prestigious, we, it's a real honor. Um, we will be holding a question and answer session at the end of Professor Gaffar's presentation, um, but if you have questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box um, as they occur to you during the talk, um, and we will have time for two or three during the question and answer session at the end. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to hand over to Professor Gaffar I hope you all enjoy the talk. Okay. Um, Assalamualaikum, salam sejahtera, and good afternoon uh, to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Professor Dr. A. Gafa Ahmad, or some people call me as Prof. G. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer, Badan Warisan Malaysia, uh, for inviting me uh, to share uh, about community engagement program in the conservation of heritage building in Sarawak, Malaysia. And also, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Kate for introducing me uh, before uh, I start the presentation. Now, um, I think this uh, topic is quite relevant and important uh, in Malaysia, particularly, because when we do conservation of heritage buildings, we, we involve uh, communities around us. So they need to know about the projects, what's going on, uh, what you're going to do with the buildings. That they, every day they see the building. So we need to uh, inform them and uh, communicate with them. Okay, let me press uh, next one. Okay, so I was um, given about one hour to share my experience and uh, knowledge about uh, community engagement in heritage building conservation. And this within this one hour, I'm hoping that I will cover these um, five topics, uh, which are Sarawak cultural heritage. I think you need to know about uh, Sarawak cultural heritage because all these um, uh, projects uh, were taken place in Sarawak. Uh, second, I'll just give you a little bit about the definition uh, of community engagement and also the concept. Uh, then uh, I will talk about Conservation of heritage ports in Sarawak. I 
for this particular talk, I will focus on three uh, heritage ports which I've been involved. Uh, fourth, community engagement programs in building conservation projects in Sarawak. And finally, uh, some conclusion before I end the presentation. Uh, next one. Okay, just a little bit about uh, Sarawak. Sarawak is located in the island of Borneo, um, in the uh, uh, north part of Kalimantan. And um, the history of Sarawak, you know, goes back before 19th century when Sarawak was under Brunei Sultanate. And then later on uh, in 1841 to 1941, the White Raja administers uh, Sarawak. Uh, after that in 1942 to 1945, Japanese occupation during the World War. And subsequently, uh, Sarawak was under British colony 1946 to 1963. And Malaysia, uh, from 1963 uh, onwards. Now, uh, I'm not so sure whether you have been to Sarawak or not. If you don't, if you have not been to Sarawak, I strongly recommend you to come to Sarawak and experience yourself about Sarawak rich uh, cultural heritage. And uh, you can see um, in the forms of buildings, uh, different diverse uh, ethnic groups and food and also the customs and also the culture. And uh, since I was appointed as the uh, Sarawak uh, honorary curator for the Sarawak um, Museum Department, I began to learn about Sarawak culture through my uh, visits to various heritage sites and meeting with the local people and of course with the um, Sarawak agencies. So this bring me some interest, very high interest on Sarawak cultural heritage. The, the picture you've seen uh, on the screen here, that lady, I met her uh, at uh, Ana Raiz Long House uh, back in December 2023, which was last year. Um, I was so amazed with her. and she was uh, 83 years old something like that and and she still maintained her old culture and traditions and the, the other three buildings on the left hand side are the uh, Sarawa old uh, museum uh, top left then uh, bottom left is uh, uh, Panaraya uh, Mosque near Brook Dot Yacht. And the building in the middle is a, a square tower in Kuching. Next. Now, um, Sarawak has its own ordinance. And it is called Sarawak Heritage Ordinance of 2019. And uh, they have gazetted many heritage buildings in Sarawak. And for your information, there are about 15 heritage ports built during the Brook administration. Some of these uh, forts are in good condition. Some of them are in a stage of dilapidation. And under the 11 Malaysia plan, five heritage ports had been selected and conserved. Uh, that amounted uh, uh, 25 million ringgit or USD 5.96 million. And these five forts are Port Emma in Kanawit, Port Hose in Marudi, Port Lili in Batong, Port Brook in Dulao, and Fort Sylvia in Kapit. Next. Now, a little bit about the definition of community engagement. I think most of you know, maybe heard about these terminologies. 
But uh, for this presentation, I would like to just highlight on the definition of community. It's a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. And I'm sure we are we are part of our in our own community, right? Whenever you you stay or you live at. And engagement means the act of engaging or the state of being engaged. So I'm connected to something, right? I'm engage, engaging to something. And community engagement is a strategic process with the specific purpose of working with identified groups of people. So the, you are linking with a groups of people, your community and other groups of people, whether they are connected by geographic location or same area, or maybe a special interest, they have their own uh, special interest, or affiliation to identify and address issues affecting their um, well, uh, I can't see it, but I think well being. Huh? Next one. Now, um, there are many tools for you to engage with. Uh, your community or others' community. So in a form of inform, you have dialogue and you make decision. And sometimes you need to consult and you get them involved or you get them collaborate with your projects. And of course, you implement what you have planned. And uh, the other groups, maybe government agencies, local authorities, private sectors, stakeholders, or business partners. And with this engagement, of course, there are benefits that you can get out of this. Uh, the community have the confidence and they are being inclusive part of the uh, community projects and they organize themselves. They've been cooperative with other uh, stakeholders and people can hear their voice so in a way that they, they become influential in the community and they need to be get, getting together among themselves and to sustain and also mobilizing themselves in any projects that they have been carried out. Next one. Now, if I put this into diagrams and pictures, this is what you get when it comes to um, community engagement related to conservation of heritage buildings. So these are the uh, benefits that you can get when you get your community involved in any conservation of heritage building projects. So the property values, there will be um, the price of the property will be up. Uh, urban development, uh, funding, you, you get funding and sponsors. Um, heritage tourism, cultures, and of course, uh, local pride. Next one. Okay, let's back to our main uh, topic here. Um, I will just focus on these three ports uh, for the community engagement. Uh, first is Fort Emma. Fort Emma is located at Kanawit. If you can see from the map here, the star in the middle is Kanawit. The, um, the biggest town close to Kanawit is Cebu. So it is about uh, one hour uh, drive from Cebu to Kanawit. Um, the second one is uh, Fort Hoes in Marudi, the, the red star close to Brunei. Uh, Marudi is about uh, 30 minutes flight, you know, Twin Otter. If you uh, take Twin Otter from Miri, uh, you will get to Marudi. And the third fort is Fort Lili. Fort Lili is um, close to um, Sri Aman or Betong, or about now three hours drive from Kuching. So these are the three forts which I've involved you know, as a uh, honorary creator for Sarawak uh, Museums Department. And Fort Emma, the project of Fort Emma costs about 2.89 million. Fort Hose, about 2.16 million ringgit. 
and Fort Lily about 3.3 million ringgit. And this project uh, took about uh, nearly two years uh, from year 2018, 2019. One of the uh, Fort uh, completed in early 2020, just before uh, restriction movement order uh, because of the COVID. Next one. A um, little bit um, historical background of these forts. You can just read up here on your screen. Uh, fort Emma was built 1849, and uh, it was uh, known as Kubu Penowit. Uh, uh, and then the, most of these forts, they are located, uh, was built by during the uh, uh, British administration, and they were located at the along the river or on the hill on the hill so that it can overlook the um the, the river and also what's going on and uh, 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 below the the hill okay so um this uh, fort emma was rebuilt it was on, on fire in 1859 and it was rebuilt in in 1860 and uh, this uh Fort Emma was Emma was named after James Brooks' uh, elder sister, who is Emily Brooke. And Fort Hose, it was built and completed in 1901, uh, but there was um, again it was on fire uh, that uh, raised the building to the ground. So the local community contributed uh, bullion poles. Bullion is. Um, iron wood or the hard wood uh, from Sarawak for the reconstruction of the fort. And uh, it was rebuilt according to its original dimensions and design. For Fort Lily, Fort Lily was built by Charles Brooke back in uh, 1858. And it was originally known as Fort Betong because it was located in Betong. But was later changed to Fort Lily, taking over uh, Charles Brooke's wife who is Margaret Alice Lily. And there was a fort uh, near um, at Sri Aman called uh, Fort Alice. Okay, after uh, the Brook era, uh, this Fort Lily was converted into a police station and administrative office uh, before it was left abandoned for several years. Um, then the conservation project uh, commenced in 2019. So all these three forts, they are gazetted under Sarawak Heritage Ordinance. Means you need to get uh, uh, written permission from the director of Sarawak Museum Department before you do any conservation projects or do any mo uh, modification or alteration to this heritage building. Next one. Now, before we started these projects, um, the um, government the gov uh, government agencies um, who was at that time the uh, Sarawak uh, JKR or Sarawak Public Works Department appointed uh, consultants architect to lead this uh, project. And what they need to do is First, they need to do the lapidation survey, which it end up with a report. So this dilapidation survey or reconnaissance survey um, uh, involve diagnosing any building defects and they need to be recorded and there shall be uh, proposed treatment to all these uh, building defects. So if you can see from the screen here, um, among these three uh, forts, uh, Fort Lily has the biggest number of defects. Uh, Fort Emma has 15 uh, defects, Fort Hose has 11 defects, and Fort Lily has 17 uh, defects. And some of the defects are uh, uh, damaged concrete floor, harmful growth, timber floorboards, rotten timber floorboards, um, leakage, you know, 
and also uh, external display items, you know, because of this uh, weather, weather condition. Okay, next one. Now, these are some images of the conservation of uh, Fort. Uh, this one is uh, Fort Emma. You can see uh, how it looks like uh, before um, conservation. And during conservation, uh, there was a temporary roof installed above the building because they are doing some uh, roofing roof works, uh, changing their uh, roofing materials. And the one at the bottom is an image uh, after conservation when it was completed and done. Next one. And for Ford Hose, these three images uh, show how it looks like uh, before, during, and also after. Next one. For Fort Lily, Fort Lily is more of the reconstruction because the structure of the fort is in bad condition and is structurally not uh, sound. And the uh, we uh, have decided to reconstruct uh, the building according to its original character of form and also materials. So the one um, on the top left is Fort uh, Lily. Um, the uh, top right is during construction. This is showing we are installing the roofing materials. And the one at the bottom is uh, one it is it was completed. Okay. Now, okay, let's forget about this conservation work and let me just highlight on the, uh, what are the community engagement programs that we have carried out uh, during the conservation of these three forts. And if you see these uh, images, um, you can clearly see um, how the community get together uh, for before the, the beginning of conservation of Fort uh, Emma. Okay. All right. Uh, next. Now, when you involve with conservation projects, and if you want the community to get involved, you need to include the cost. Um, you need to allocate some cost for the community engagement programs. Now, I remember back before 2018, the then director of Sarawak Museum Department, uh, Mr. Ipoi Datai, um, had reminded me. Uh, he said, uh, Professor, if you do conservation projects of these gazetted buildings, please include community engagement programs. And at that time, I was like quite, um, uh, you know, surprised because all this while when I work with conservation projects in the in Malay Peninsula or Semenanjung Malaysia, we did not include this um, allocation for community engagement programs. So if you see here, this um, allocation is a part or included under the provisional sum of the in the project contract. So for Emma, we have allocated about 45,000 ringgit or nearly um, 10,000 uh, US dollar. Uh, for Fort Host, 35,000 ringgit for the community engagement, which is about 8.3K or 8,300 US dollar. And Fort Lily, uh, we have allocated 20,000 ringgit or about uh, 4,700 US uh, dollar. So I think this is quite important. Um, for those who have attended this talk, and if you are involved with conservation of heritage buildings, uh, please include some allocation uh, for community engagement programs. Next one. Now, let me tell you what are these uh, community engagement that involve in these three uh, uh, forts. The first one is uh, conservation of Fort Emma. Um, you see those skulls? 
This is quite interesting. I never had experience with dealing with skull. This is real human skulls. There are nine uh, human skulls or antupala. Antu means hantu or pala means kepala. Um, and this skull were previously kept inside the Fort Emma for many years. So when we want to do this uh, conservation work of Fort Emma, nobody dares to remove the fort which was kept inside the fort uh, out of the building. The only thing that we need to do is mirroring ceremony, like a ritual ceremony, mirroring. So mirroring is, um, is known to the local community. Uh, it's their own culture and I have to respect their, uh, the local culture. So they believe that they don't want to be cursed so they need to engage the third party to do the ritual to remove these uh, nine human skulls out of this fort. We, we place it outside under, under a special shed uh, outside the, uh, the fort, which is within the, um, the uh, compound of the uh, uh, building. So this uh, is a big event. It's a big event. Uh, the, the organizers, uh, it's a joint uh, JKR, uh, Sarawak JKR uh, Regional Office, and also Sarawak Museum Department. We organize this special uh, community engagement. We, in, we invite uh, local community, local leaders, assemblymen, and uh, district officer, and even the police, you know, to come and, and witness this uh, ritual ceremony. And this is... To be frank with you, this is my first experience seeing um, the slaughtering of two pigs, uh, one of which uh, was the wild boar and a rooster, and they uh, take the bloods from these animals and they do all the rituals. So if you see this, uh, the three gentlemen with the hornbill feather on the headgear, they are the uh, Iban leaders. So they recite something, do some rituals, and they fit the local people, you know, just to, uh, to give respect uh, to these uh, nine human skulls, uh, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, and I have to respect their culture, of course. And, and the cause of this was included in our um, allocation uh, budget for the project. Next one. And we are still in conservation of Fort Emma, and we organized community dialogue, uh, which was held at the uh, district office in Kanawit. And I think this is quite interesting because this community dialogue allowed local communities, you know, there are many um, ethnic groups to share their perspectives, perspectives with the government agencies. And in this case, the uh, Sarawak um, Public Works Department uh, and uh, Sarawak Museum Department, local council, district officer, community leaders, and project consultants. And we also invited uh, students uh, to join this community dialogue. And if you can see um, the uh, picture on your right-hand side, so we place all these uh, uh, panels consisting of these uh, government agencies, a local council, district officer, and we have a dialogue, you know, we explain to them what we are doing to the building and what will happen once the building completed. And we allow them to visit during the construction or during the conservation of Fort Emma. And they raise uh, questions uh, for clarifications. And, and some of them uh, give a great input on the history of the building, which we may which we uh, uh, not include in our uh, report uh, earlier. So they have been very helpful and they are very, uh, they're really um, uh, involved with this uh, participation of community dialogue. Next one. And for the conservation of Fort Emma, under this community engagement, we have allocated uh, conservation workshop. I think this is quite important. For all conservation projects in Malaysia, I urge uh, 
especially to uh, lead consultant to include in the preliminary uh, uh, in your project uh, some allocation to organize conservation workshops. This is very important because not all government agencies, uh, officers, or community leaders understand about conservation workshop. So in terms of the uh, technical matters on the how are we going to restore the building. So by conducting this um, conservation workshop of Benkil Pemuliaraan Pubu Ema Kanawit Sarawak, people understand conservation is not that easy and it involves a lot of uh, knowledge and also expertise. Next one. Now, uh, we move on to the next uh, community engagement programs. Uh, this one is conservation of Fort Hose. Fort Hose, as I said, located uh, in Marudi. And before we start the project, um, we organize a blessing ceremony. And most um, community uh, groups here are Christian. So we invited uh, the local Borneo Evangelical Mission Church to uh, perform a choir according to their customs uh, inside this uh, uh, fort host. This is uh, before uh, we start this conservation of fort host. And you see those, uh, sorry, if you see those uh, empty chairs, this is before we, we began. Uh, can you see? Can you, uh, slides before this. Uh, okay, see those red chairs? This is before we start the program yet. So they are arranging the chairs. And I think a lot of people attended, attended this uh, uh, blessing ceremony. Next one. And uh, during this conservation of uh, Fort Host, we organize workshops and site visit. And this workshop, just like Fort uh, Emma, this conservation workshop, of Fort Hose was held at Dewan Suara Marudi, uh, and it was uh, attended by uh, technical people, government agencies, uh, and also, uh, of course, uh, those involved with this uh, project. Okay, so in this, uh, if we see picture on the right hand side, we exhibited uh, some images or drawings of uh, this uh, Fort. A host and the picture on the left is a conservation workshop where we had selected few speakers to give their talks uh, on the conservation of the fort host. Uh, the consultant also they give uh, their, their talks in this conservation workshop. Next one. Now uh, move on to uh, conservation of what lily. There are two ritual ceremonies. Uh, if you see the one on your right uh, hand side is uh, Doa, uh, Doa Selamat. Uh, we organize this at the nearby uh, mosque, uh, which is uh, Betong Jabit Mosque, right after Margaret pay prayer. And the um, representative from Sarawak Museum Department, this is Encik Awang, uh, representing the government agencies. And we gather the uh, uh, local jama'ah to recite doa, you know, just to get blessing. Semoga, you know, like semoga project ini selamat, you know, to make sure that we run the project smoothly and safe. And if you see on the left-hand side, this is another community. Uh, the Iban community, they have their own uh, ritual uh, ceremony or mirroring, just like um, just like uh, the one in Fort Emma. So they have conducted a uh, mirroring ceremony uh, with their community uh, leaders uh, to and which involved the slaughtering of one pig along with rice, eggs, and other offerings. The one that uh, uh, from Fort Emma, uh, two pigs were slaughtered. And for this uh, Fort Lily, only one pig uh, was slaughtered. And the cost already included in the allocation or, or the budget of the project. Next one. 
Uh, for Fort Lily, we have organized uh, two community engagement program, um, one of which is workshop. So if you see for the trend, all these three uh, conservation of uh, Fort's project involve workshop. I think workshop is very important. Workshop gives, uh, conservation work workshop gives um, the uh, technical people or government agencies, uh, some experience and knowledge about conserving heritage buildings. Some of them may not be attending uh, workshops. So this is the good time for them to attend this uh, conservation workshop. And this conservation workshop of Fort Lily was conducted at the uh, district council in Batong. And the workshop uh, were uh, briefed by building contractor. And if you see the picture on the right-hand side, the building contractor explained uh, about the uh, Berlian roof. So we, we did a mock-up of this Berlian roof, how it was laid. Uh, this mock-up is, um, is important, uh, not only for the contractor, but also for the consultants and for the government agencies and the client to see how we lay these uh, Berlian uh, shingles. And this mock-up was... Uh, was uh, constructed on site. Next one. Now, we come to conclusion. I think I end up uh, quite early here, but maybe we can allow question and answers. So I have a uh, uh, few conclusion here. And the first one is uh, community engagement programs, such as the one you, you, you saw before, uh, ritual ceremony, workshop, site visit, dialogues, and related events have enabled deeper contextual understanding of the community perceptions towards sense of place. They feel they feel they are belong to this project, you know, and they we highlighting their cultural identity and of course increase their heritage values. And this will attract a lot of tourists if we converted this uh, building into galleries or museums. So, so good for the um, local heritage tourism. Next one. And the conservation of Fort Emma and Fort Hose and Fort Lily have portrayed a success story of smart coordination. I, I said smart coordination and orchestrated efforts. This is by all parties. And who are those? The government agencies, the consultants, we learn from each other. You know, some of these, they had, this is their first experience dealing with conservation projects. And in respect, their expertise, sometimes I learn from them too, and they learn from me as well, uh, which is good. Next one. The, uh, okay, this is for the allocation. Huh? The provisional sum earmarked for community engagement programs of these four uh, conservation projects have created substantial impact. We don't ask money from the client because we already included in our project. And these uh, directly, indirectly have increased awareness and appreciation among local communities in Sarawak towards safeguarding and protecting their intangible and tangible cultural heritage. So this image again at the um, uh, Fort uh, Emma bef before the conservation uh, started. Um, community engagement programs, uh, which I already explained before, have or had fostered a sense of trust, belonging and strong relationships among the community members because we talk to them, we get them involved, we hear their voice, we hear their opinions, and of course, they are leaders in undertaking heritage endeavors in the future. So they feel they feel proud of their heritage, which have been taken care of uh, uh, by them and also um, monitored by the government and Sarawak Museum Department. All right, so uh, I, before I end this uh, presentation, I would like to say my greatest appreciation uh, to Sarawak State Government, uh, Sarawak Museum Department, uh, Sarawak Public uh, Works Department, and this include the JKR uh, Regional Office, 
And of course, uh, university that I was uh, working at now, University of Science Malaysia. And before I end this, uh, I have this um, next one. I have this um, uh, QR code, which uh, I give you some time for you to, if you have your handphone, maybe you can just uh, uh, scan this uh, QR code and this will lead you to my article, uh, which I have written uh, for Asia Pacific Cultural Center for UNESCO or ACCU in Nara, Japan, uh, back in 2019. And this article uh, entitled Community Engagement Programs in the Conservation of Heritage Buildings in Sarawak, Malaysia. So please uh, scan this um, QR code. I hope it works. <laughs> Uh, please uh, just say in the chat that uh, you managed to get this uh, article uh, by scanning this QR code. Maybe any one of you can just uh, scan this and say that you got you got my article uh, from this uh, uh, QR code. Okay. Able to download. Okay. Thank you, uh, Sham Zani. All right. Thank you. So you can just uh, scan this, right? Um, and with that, of course, uh, I would like to say thank you very much for your time and patience. And I hope uh, we can meet again in different platform uh, on conservation of heritage buildings in Malaysia. And I pass now this screen to the organizer, Badan Warisan Malaysia. So thank you so much, uh, Professor Gaffar, for that really insightful talk. Um, I think it's so interesting to see just the importance of starting that dialogue with the community and what an impact that has on a project where it's just not just conserving a building, but it becomes something so much more. Um, so we would like to move to uh, a question and answer session now. Um, we've had one question uh, in the Q&A box. Uh, so thank you, Elizabeth Moggy, um, who would like to know when was the original mermaid statue at Fort Emma constructed? Not the present one, but the original statue. Uh, Professor Gaffar, do you, could you answer that for us? Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, that mermaid, and it's not only mermaid, there's, uh, there's uh, also other statues like rhinos, you know, and I don't know how this statue was there because we've been trying to, to get this um, connection with the uh, Fort Emma, right? And since that thing was becoming an icon to the building, even though they are not related, <laughs> But we managed to relocate the, the mermaid and also the rhino statues. You know why? Because they are located uh, right in front of the building. And we don't want them to, to, be, uh, to be seen in a way because they are not related to history. But we just put them, uh, the mermaid, we put it uh, at the back of the Fort Emma facing the river. So what we, 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 we restore the statue and we repaint. And it took us um, a great discussions among the consultants, you know, what color to, be, to paint the statue, the, the mermaid, and how are you going to um, restore, because some of parts of the mermaid are gone, uh, except... Uh, and there was uh, there was a joke there saying that can we remove the hair of the mermaid so that we can see the um, the female you know you know what I mean <laughs> because they closed that uh, uh, the front part so I said no because don't don't change anything you know we just leave it there we relocate that's it you know uh, but uh, it, it is uh, not intentionally uh, part of the project but in due respect we did not demolish. We just relocate that mermaid statue and rhino statue to a more uh, uh, reasonable area so that we want to pay attention on the building, not the, the statues. But if you ask me when, I, I'm not so sure when 
uh, it was uh, built, but it was there when we came in, uh, Kate. Um, thanks so much for that answer. I, I find that really fascinating. Is that, is that from your question or you, you saw it from the chat? It was from the chat. <laughs> or oh, 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 maybe they noticed the, the statue, huh? Yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's really fascinating, isn't it? Somehow that sometimes the connections people have, the community have with the heritage doesn't come but from- Kate one, Kate, one more thing is, Sarawa, I don't think they have rhinos. They don't have rhinos. <laughs> so that, was, that worries me, you know, when I said, do we want to, to demolish this rhino? Because maybe there was, there, was, there was event, there was event that occurred in Kanovit. So part of the event was to, built these uh, uh, rhinos. So they just place it there, you know? <laughs> um, oh, Dominic Chuo says the original mermaid was repaired and refurbished and re repainted, relocated to face the river. Okay, so- Yeah, Dominic Chu, well, Dominic Chu uh, I would just give credit to him. He, uh, he was our uh, consultant leader. He's an architect uh, for this uh, conservation of Fort uh, Ema. And uh, we being a good um, a team uh, for this uh, project, uh, Kate. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dominic. <laughs> Thank you. And we have one more question here from Shanzani Mohadin, um, who asks, what are the challenges you face during the conservation of the three forts and how did you solve them? Um, okay. Thank you for, for, um, for your question. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, on the consultant side, most of these consultants, they are new to conservation projects. So when I was appointed uh, to give advice to this consultant, I have to brief them, uh, to explain to them about conservation projects, what should be carried out, what should be included in our BQ, what I need to be included in the dilapidation survey, and so on. So I have to explain to them, which I think they they kind of are very receptive because they learned uh, from what I've given to them. That's from the consultant side. Uh, then we have faced another problem, the contractor. Um, you know, if you want to do conservation projects, the contractor must have uh, this specialized code uh, under CIDB, uh, which is B03. And all these contractors involved with this project, they don't have B03. B03 means you have done some conservation work or you have gone to conservation uh, uh, seminars or workshops, then you apply for this specialized code, B03, which is conservation and uh, conservation uh, of buildings. So, once, because this is very specialized work, I need to explain to this contractor, we have to mon closely monitor them um, to make sure that they are doing according to the contract, according to the uh, project, and to keep on reminding them about their progress. Uh, if you see the uh, mock-up, uh, the one that I've shown in the picture, the uh, mock-up of Berlian Shingles at uh, Fort Lili, we have to, we have to build this mock-up how are we going to lay and fix the bullion uh, shingles, the roof shingles, so that the contractor know how to do it properly, you know, on the building. So mock-up is quite important. Then the other thing is communicating with the uh, local community. Uh, the, one, this, the community to me is a less uh, problem because they are strong people, they are very nice. You know, and uh, as long as we uh, respect their culture and their beliefs, they will go along with us. So we just listen, but a good thing about them is they give their views, which we take account in our conservation projects. So these are the challenges. In terms of the cost, we managed to complete the, uh, the project according to the cost. So there is no variation order or VOC. One good thing, because we already included, we have already uh, planned ahead, especially having some budget for uh, community engagement programs. Uh, I think that's, I hope I can uh, I answer your question, uh, Pesham. 
Thank you very much for that. I think this is obviously immensely challenging, very complex work. Um, we have another update about the statues. Elizabeth Moggy says uh, she does not remember the statues being near the fort some years back, but rhinos, there were rhinos in the Marudi area uh, pre-war, but not in the Kanawit area. So there's an update uh, to that. Um, are there any more questions? Um, if there are questions, please feel free to tap, type them now in the Q&A box. Um, otherwise, uh, I, I would like to ask uh, on behalf of Badan um, what are what do you think the ongoing importance of these forts will be for the communities in Sarawak? It, it, are, you, are you asking me or are you asking Badan Warisan? I'm asking you. <laughs> okay, what was the question? I can't hear you. Uh, sorry. sorry. Um, what do you think will be the ongoing importance of the forts to the community? The ongoing importance? Yes, of the forts. Of the forts. Mm. Okay, this, this forts, they will be converted into galleries. Mm. And uh, during this uh, community dialogue, we also encourage them to get involved whenever we come to, you know, uh, ec economic uh, purposes like selling postcards or being a tour guide because tour guide need to be from the local people okay who know about the history and who knows about the building so we can't get other people to be a tour guide and ideally tour guide must come from the local community yeah so if they get involved with this uh, um guide they it's good for their economy also sure. and we also encourage them to take care of this uh, building Mm. Even though it's gazetted building and it's under Sarawak Museum Department, but they play a, a major role also to keep the, the building intact uh, and make sure that they are, they are in a good condition. Excellent. Um, this is obviously um, really a model project. Um, so if we look from going from a, on a local scale, what are the lessons that we can draw from this onto a wider scale? How can we engage the wider community uh, in supporting and being interested and following uh, in heritage? I think we, we need to keep on um, creating awareness uh, to this uh, local community. And I, I can tell you these uh, three projects which I've involved with, at least the community knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. At least they know what conservation is all about and why it is so important, why we need to have to do a proper uh, way of conserving heritage building. But uh, this awareness um, need to be carried out by all parties, not only uh, the community, but also the agencies and also the clients. And I strongly uh, believe under the Srawa um, Museum Department, they are continuously uh, creating awareness, you know, organizing uh, awareness programs on conservation of culture or heritage buildings. So I think uh, this thing needs to be carried out. Absolutely. Um... How can we reach out to uh, different communities? How did you get into contact with the local communities surrounding the forts? Okay, interesting questions. You know, when we want to organize our conservation workshops, because most of the consultants, they are come from Kuching. They are not uh, come from the, um, from, from local Betong, you know, or Marudi, uh, or even Kenawit. Um, uh, Most of them are from Kuching. And of course, they don't know much about this contact. So what we, have, what we did was we engaged with the district officer and also the uh, district council. We had a meeting with them and with their help, they identified the community leaders. And from these community leaders, we engaged with them and we asked them to bring as many uh, people uh, to join our program. So with their help, we managed to get uh, local communities um, attending our programs. So to answer your question, Kate, uh, we need the help from the uh, district officer and also uh, district council. 
excellent. So it was a real whole community effort. Um, we have time for just one last question uh, from Colette Hassan, um, who asks, were these forts called upon at any time to defend their territories? Yeah, I think um, the defend is only from the local, <laughs> local people. They are not uh, fighting against um, or other uh, colonizers like you know French or, or Spanish, you know, because they are the, uh, during this uh, British administration. Of course, Sarawak is very big state. It's even like bigger than uh, peninsula, and the only thing is to because they they come with different ethnicity or ethnic groups, and some of them are against the uh, British administrators. So the, the threats or the defense is uh, between these two parties, the uh, British administrators and the local uh, people who are against them. So there's no like a war, you know, where you use uh, 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 gun powders, you know, to attack and it's no, not, not that I know of, you know, in my reading. Just like, just like um, in, in Penang, there was a fort called Fort Cornwallis uh built by the british and the british uh built this uh, fort cornwallis uh and in the beginning from the nibong stockade and then later on it was rebuilt uh, with masonry and they thought to defend uh, uh, them from the attack from the french <laughs> but it never happened the french did not manage to come uh, to to this uh, regions uh, particularly penang to attack the british so it become like um, there's no no challenging, you know, uh, for that particular structure. Thank you very much. Um, that kind of alludes to just how complex and interesting this history is. Um, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for now. So uh, just remains uh, for me to thank Professor Gaffar so much for his time and uh, this fascinating talk today. Um, and I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. Um, our wonderful community of heritage supporters are really so important to us here at Badan Warisan Malaysia. So if you're not already a member, please do join us um, or drop by to visit our heritage center at number two Jalan Stoner in KL. Um, you can check out our website or follow us on Instagram. Um, and if you enjoyed the talk today, please feel free to donate to us at Badan Warisan Malaysia. We are an NGO um, and we appreciate all the donations we receive. Um, so thanks once again uh, very much and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Uh, that's thank all you very us. much, Kate. Thank you very much, Badan <laughs> Warisan Malaysia. And thank you all who attended my talk today. We we'll see you again in another platform. Thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. Thank you. Bye-bye.